What's going on, people? Mike C Town here with the first video of 2022. And that's going to be me going over my favorite albums that dropped in 2021. But uh, before we get into that, real quick, I want to give a massive shout out to Boots Bloody Boots for sending me this awesome Danzig How the Gods Kill Long Sleeve. It's my favorite Danzig album. So I am super in love with this shirt, man. This is some high quality stuff here, man. Not some bullshit that's going to fall apart when you wash it. So jump on his stuff, man. I'll put a link down there in the description section so you can go to his website. You can also go follow him on Instagram, but um, I believe the stuff he does is fairly limited, so you have to jump on it pretty quick. But um, yeah, massive shout out to him. Seems like a cool guy, so I'm super happy to be connecting with him. Um, moving past that, uh, yeah, this was a weird ass year. I guess last year was a weird ass year. Um, a lot of music came out. Um, admittedly, a lot of stuff that I just didn't get around to listening to when I started going over this list, I was noticing how much stuff I remembered coming out, but I forgot to actually go listen. So yeah, this is still a fairly comprehensive list, but there are quite a few things that I missed. Um, moving past that though, just so you guys know, this is my list. This is not your list. If you do not like my list, literally no one gives a shit. But you're more than welcome to drop your list down there in the comments section so we can all kind of learn something, find a couple albums we weren't aware of before, or we can just pick your list apart and tell you that you have shit taste. Whatever. But um, yeah, uh, this is going to be 30 albums. I'm going to try not to blab about each one, but uh, you guys know how I do. So um, let's just get into it here. Also, let me mention for anyone that is not familiar with this channel or just kind of stumbled upon this video, there will be no hip hop on this list. And that's because I do a best of the year list with my guys at Dead End Hip Hop with all of the best hip hop albums that came out in 2021. I'm not exactly sure when that video will be coming out, but keep an eye on it. So this 30 spot um, actually battled with the new Unto Others album. Um, this album that I'm gonna mention actually won because I didn't know about the Unto Others album uh, called Strength until maybe a week ago, I guess. Um, which, real quick, that actually went for a few other albums too, like the new Alterage album, which is fucking sick. But uh, I just didn't know about it. I didn't know about it until a couple days ago, so it would make no sense for me to try to put it on this list. Um, while I'm on that subject, uh, there's also a new Beketh Nexamu album that I literally didn't hear until yesterday. And it's amazing, but it would be bullshit for me to try to stick it on this list. But number 30, Mike and the Moon Pies with one to grow on. Um, I know nothing about Mike and the Moon Pies. Uh, I'd never heard of them until recently, but this album is great. It actually kind of reminds me of uh, older Shooter Jennings, but in a really, really good way. Like put the O back in country era Shooter. Um, just really nice old school country, man. I'm a big fan. Number 29 is going to be uh, Gazelle Twin and NYX with Deep England. And uh, this is a fascinating album. It's like traditional English folk, but played by an electronic drone band. Um, it's hard to wrap your head around something like this, but I actually think it's brilliant. Uh, number 28, I'm going with Paysage Divers Geister. Um, as I said before in my mid-year, um, this is closer to a Dark Space album in my opinion, but that's not a bad thing at all because Dark Space is great. But uh, yeah, this is great, well-crafted black metal with a lot of atmosphere. And I realize I said great a whole bunch of times just now, but I'm not, I'm not going to go back and redo it because fuck it, I don't care. Um, number 27, I'm going with Blood Magic with Medieval Dark Arts. Great black metal that's nasty and cold, but has a lot of great riffs. Number 26, I'm going with Charlie Crockett with Music City USA. Uh, I got put on the Charlie Crockett uh, maybe last year sometime, and I liked the other album they did earlier this year, but this one is fucking great. Reminds me of, uh, I don't know, like a little bit of old Merle. Reminds me at times of some George Jones. It's really, really, really good stuff. Number 25, I'm going with Ancient Mastery with Chapter 1. Across the Mountains of the Drammer Scroll. 
and I'm probably still butchering that name, but either way, this album is fantastic, really well done, well-crafted black metal with a, a really triumphant and epic sound. At number 24, I don't know how to pronounce the name of this band or the name of the album, so I'm just gonna, you can see it, it's right down there. Um, but yeah, raw black metal, but with a weird and kind of twisted feel to it, but it's really, really good. At number 23, I'm going with the Colst with Crepitation of Phlegathon. And uh, yeah, my boy Justin never lets me down with delivering some nasty ass, filthy death metal. And this one has a nice old school feel to it. Um, I've said before that I don't listen to a lot of death metal these days, but when I do, it's this kind of shit. At number 22, I'm going with G.G. King with Remain Intact, which is a great dirty punk rock album with some really nice pop elements to it that cause the songs to really, really get stuck in your head. Um, at number 21, I'm going with Slant with the album One, um, Korean hardcore that's fast and super pissed off. And uh, it's just great to throw on when you're in that type of mood. At number 20, I'm going with Cannibal Corpse with Violence Unimagined. Yeah, it's Cannibal Corpse doing what Cannibal Corpse does, and Cannibal Corpse does it quite well. Brutal death metal with great riffs. In my opinion, it's easily some of the best shit that Cannibal Corpse has done in a really, really long time. Uh, number 19, I'm going with Of the Wand and the Moon with Your Love Can't Hold This Wreath of Sorrow. Um, I didn't love this album when I first heard it. It's like Neo Folk with a, with a lot of like 60s psychedelic almost pop elements, um, but it's just one of those albums that had to click later on, and when it clicked, I absolutely fell in love with it, and now, can't stop listening to it. Um, number 18, I'm going with The Sun's Journey Through the Night with Demo 2. Um, this is awesome, atmospheric black metal uh, that sounds like an extension of his last album, Crawling Nebula, which I just adored. But yeah, this is a really, really passionate piece of art. Um, number 17, I'm going with Alan Jackson, Where Have You Gone? Um, admittedly, I haven't paid much attention to Alan Jackson over these last few years. Um, and when I heard this album, I instantly regretted that fact. You know, this album is everything I love about country music. You know, the heartfelt lyrics, the melodies, and he has a cover of Merle Haggard's uh, That's The Way Love Goes, and it's just, it's flawless. So um, yeah, definitely a great album. Um, number 16, I'm going with Old Nick, A New Generation of Vampiric Conspiracies. Uh, raw but super bizarre black metal with a kind of punky attitude. Um, really unique band for sure. Something you guys should definitely check out. At number 15, I'm going with Revenant Marquise with Below the Lansker Line. And this album feels like 2021. You know, nasty, dark, claustrophobic, sad, ugly, you know? Um, this should actually be a bit higher on the list because I really found myself listening to it a lot during quarantine. The muddy, ugly, black metal sound of it just really worked with my mood this past year. But yeah, this guy just does not know how to miss when it comes to playing this type of black metal. Uh, number 14, I'm going with Cold Cave with Fate in Seven Lessons. Um, so yeah, this flew up the list, if you notice, from the mid-year. Um, this is catchy, almost dancey synth pop that's very reminiscent of Depeche Mode. It's some of their best work yet. Um, number 13, we're going with Leonaka with Tides of Triumph. And uh, I'm still not seeing enough people talking about this album for my taste, you know? Native American themed black metal with incredible musicianship, you know, nasty black metal, with some nice melodies and some kind of folky parts thrown in there very, very tastefully. Moving right along with number 12, we got Kekka Rock with Pale Swordsman. Um, I listened to this more towards the end of the year than I did at the beginning of the year for whatever reason, but this is evil, but also kind of fragile and beautiful at the same time. It's just a really, really well thought out black metal project. Uh, number 11, we're going with The Underground Youth. The Falling. Um, yeah, so this band has been around for a long time, but this is the first time that one of their albums got really attached to me. You know, this is an incredible piece of neo folk. Well done, super well played. It's just a fantastic album. All right, we're at the top 10 mark. And number 10, 
Panopticon, and again into the light. Um, as always, Austin releases an incredible piece of emotional, antagonistic, and atmospheric black metal. Incredible musicianship, incredible execution. It's really a great album. At number nine, I'm going with Katera with, I don't know how to pronounce this name. I'm not even going to try, but it's right there. You see it. I meant to look it up before this. Didn't get around to it. Um, but anyway, why is still no one talking about this band? It makes no sense. They are doing some of the most unique music to come from the black metal scene. Uh, their album from last year was one of my favorites, and so is this. It's, it's black metal, but played acoustically with such precision and meaning and intention. You know, this guy is just a genius, in my opinion, when it comes to creating music, and hopefully soon, folks pick up on that because there's so much heart and culture that comes through in this album but even sonically it's just astonishing um moving past that number eight going with ethereal shroud with trisagion maybe i'm pronouncing that properly maybe i'm not uh either way this album is incredible when this dropped i was hoping to do a review on it in some capacity but i just got too busy and life shit kept happening, but this is a stellar album. Black metal with so much passion and emotion that it's undeniable. It's a dark, brooding, beautiful album that all of you should hear whether you like black metal or not. Um, at number seven, I'm going with Cradle of Judah, their self-titled album. Um, this is the debut album from this neo-folk project and I cannot gush about it enough it's perfect it's perfect in musicianship it's perfect in production it's perfect in execution listening to this takes me back to the classic world serpent days when i was first getting into neo folk and i don't know it's a good feeling and i'm just obsessed with this album and i can't wait to hear more from this guy and number six going with the self-titled album from halloween um, I said mid-year that this was the, the kind of comeback album of the century or something, and I still feel that way. Like, this was a shock of an album because it's shockingly good. I feel like this is the best album these guys have done in a really, really long time. Easily the best power metal album that I've heard in a lot of years. Um, yeah, top five here, guys. Number five. This is, this is going to be a controversial one, but who fucking cares, right? Number five, Carcass with Torn Arteries. Um, fuck the naysayers. Seriously, this is an amazing album. Does it lean more on Swan Song than some of their other sounds that people are attached to, like Heartwork or Necroticism? Sure, sure. But who cares? It's awesome. It's awesome. The bluesy death metal riffs here are some of the best that they've ever done, and I cannot get enough of it. At number four, we got Lamp of Murmur with Submission and Slavery. And this is a fascinating album. Uh, so the way people kind of discovered that shoegaze blends so well with black metal sonically, I love that we're now getting this brilliant blending of classic goth and death rock with black metal. And it's something that I don't think a lot of people expected to hear from Lamp of Murmur, but I think it's absolutely incredible. At number three, we have Chesky with This Guitar Was Stolen Along With Years Of Our Lives. And this is an amazing album. Um, whether you wanna call it a folky punk album or a punky folk album, it really doesn't matter. It's incredible music played by someone who I consider to be one of the best songwriters of our time, hands down. The music really goes straight to the soul and the lyrics touch on things like loss, compassion society and a lot of the things that a lot of us have spent a lot of time thinking about during this pandemic but yeah this is one of chesky's best albums and easily one of the most touching albums that i've heard in a while all right um number two we're going with nick cave and warren ellis with carnage and i believe i said this during the mid-year but i wasn't seeing that many people talking about this album and it's still like that for some bizarre reason um this is an incredibly gorgeous album it's sad it's frail it's dark and it's heartbreaking just like 2021 was to a lot of us but um yeah this album speaks volumes for me 
and yeah nick cave is just absolutely untouchable but um yeah we're at the number one spot and i'm sure anyone that keeps up with me on my channel is not even remotely surprised by this but yes my number one spot for the album that i listened to the most this year is the uvia the coddle split and yes i fully acknowledge that i am a uvia fanboy at this point you know i feel like anything the band does gets intrinsically attached to me for the whole year and this is absolutely no exception uvia delivers some of the best black metal to come from the scene and i said it before but you really do drift into a whole other world while listening to this album um, the Econo side is also fantastic, atmospheric, black metal, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't lean on the Uvia side like 99% of the time I put this on. So Uvia, I hope that they're going to release more music because this was such a tease. It's so good. But um, yeah, I guess that's it, guys. That's it for this video. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, make sure you drop your list down there in the comment section. Let me know what I missed for this year. And if you want to, man, let me know what you're looking forward to for um, 2022. And um, yeah, as usual, thank you for living. Thank you for loving. Thank you for being you. And I'll see you guys next time. All right. Peace out.